Hi, my name is Bruce Fogel and I'm a practicing vet. You can probably tell just from looking at me that I've been a vet for quite some time, and specifically that's 40 years. By my calculation, I've probably examined over 100,000 cats during that time. What I'm going to talk about today are some ideas, some hints for you on how you can make your cat's life even happier, healthier and more fun, so you might have to visit the vet even less often. <laughs> I probably anesthetize more cats to treat gum disease than I anesthetize cats for everything else combined. It's one of the most common problems I see. And it's preventable. It's completely preventable. First of all, using a good quality dry food will provide abrasive action. They have to chew. They have to massage their, their gums. But more than dry food, if you offer your cat, especially your young cat, bones, lamb chop bones, chicken wings, if you do that when it's under 12 weeks of age, it'll learn how to chew on bones properly. I did that with my cat Millie, and I never in her entire life have had to do anything with her teeth. I see obese cats almost every day. I see overweight cats several times a day. I'm diagnosing another cat with diabetes once every three weeks. This is an epidemic and it's an epidemic that we cause because of the way we feed our cats. This is a cat I saw last week. Here are his hips. His body should come up like that. But this one's body goes out like that. And this cat also has diabetes, and he's only four years old. He's that way because of the way he was fed. What we've done with him, as we do with all other cats that, have, uh, that are overweight, is they go on to a slimming diet. With a dry food, what you can actually do is count out the number of kibbles that you're giving. Now, arthritis is such a common problem that all of us should be assuming that if we have an elderly cat, that cat has arthritis. And there are simple things to do on a nutritional side to reduce the problems of arthritis. On a preventative level, if you start feeding a diet that has fish oil and glucosamine in it long before the cat is going to develop arthritis, the likelihood is that you are going to be postponing the onset of arthritis. Now this is something I did with my cat Millie. Millie beat me up, she wanted to go outside, and I gave in and I let her go outside. But I wanted to get her back as easily as I could. So I trained her with treats, and all I did was I used food treats. You get the, the food out, your cat is watching, and as your cat comes over, you simply say, come. You're training the cat to do something that it already wants to do. The more difficult thing is to train your cat to meow on command. Now, the way I did that with Millie was I simply got a bottle. I put some food in the bottle because I could then make a noise. And I'd have that food in front of her, but I wouldn't give it to her. Because Millie is a Maine Coon, they're very vocal, she actually would eventually, with frustration, meow. And when she meowed, I then gave her the treat. And eventually, all she had to hear was that sound outside, and she would meow. And I could tell wherever she was. One of the most common causes is parasites. And there's a single-celled parasite called Giardia that we as vets probably underdiagnose. A more common cause of diarrhea in young kittens is a dietary indiscretion. And that can mean that the owner is indiscreet or the cat has actually raided the rubbish bin. If there's consistency to the food, that means that the digestive microorganisms are getting themselves organized in the intestinal tract and it produces well-formed poops. Feed a consistent diet to your cat, the way Baudelaire has a consistent diet. And your cat is much less likely to have diarrhea Grow healthily the way he does, and you'll end up visiting the vet much less.